Are you stuck? How about unhappy? Join Elena Chapman, author, mentor, and life coach for Magical Moments with Elena as she challenges you to get out of the doldrum and start living your life to the fullest. Elena will help you take control of your life and push you to do the things you never thought you'd do. So get ready to take back your power and celebrate life with Magical Moments featuring Elena Chapman. Welcome to Magical Moments, and I'm your host, Elena Chapman, and guys, it's all about that ease and that flow in our lives. We so deserve it, and yet so many times we don't feel like we do, do we? Hmm. Well, I have an interesting magical nugget for you today that will, we're going to touch upon relationships, okay? Well, let's face it, everything is a relationship, energy. The energy we're in, that's a relationship, folks. The energy we have, the energy we want to be, it's a relationship. So, but I'm going to talk about the ooh-la-la romantic relationship, because that's what our show's about. So I thought I'd do a magical nugget about this. It's really funny. When I was in my 20s and my 30s, and we're very still close to that, (laughs) I would sit you know, I was busy. I was working. I was always working. And so I would go out to these restaurants for lunch or whatever and just sit. And I'd see these couples that were like 80 or early 90s. But the thing was, they just captivated me because they would be sitting together, the ones that I really admired. And either they would both be reading the paper and talking to each other, or they would be holding hands across the table. Or you could just tell by the conversation and the respect and the kindness. It, they seem to have this incredible of accepting each other for just who they are and treating each other with so much compassion and kindness, not with telling them how they should be, but just accepting them. And there was this really deep other earthly love between them and I saw them all the time and I said that's what I'm going to have that's what I'm going to have now you know I've asked I've talked about that a lot and people always say oh well when you weather through all the storms no folks no I have seen many couples and I have worked with many couples And I'll tell you what, weathering through the storms, it might be part of it, but actually, no, it's not. Weathering through the storms sometimes hardens people. And I've seen the other couples who are 80 who sit across the table from each other. And they're arguing and they're not happy and one's going all the time. So it all depends on what kind of relationship you want to have. But here's the thing. I have worked, you know, you all know I work through right relations. So I've worked with many, many couples. And I have worked with many, many women and, well, men men and women. And I have to say, it really comes from us. Yes, it starts with us. Because I'd say 99% of the time, even in right relations, when I was dealing with all those divorces, it always came to what the person thought about themselves, how much they loved love themselves. Why? Because we can't expect ourselves to understand how to accept and love someone else if we don't love and accept ourselves. We can't. It's like asking that, like Myla Angelou said, it's like asking that man without a shirt, can I have your shirt? He can't give it. There's no shirt. There's no, there's no understanding. And I've even had, I'll use one, one client who came to me who I've known for a hundred, oh God, I've known her forever. And she's saying, well, I just can't depend on him anymore. But I also know the history. And where is that coming from? That's because she doesn't depend on herself. So she's looking for him to fill the void. Do you see how that works? Nobody can fill your void. So today, I have a special guest. And this is not all daunting. 
Okay, I want to make sure you know that, and you'll see that in the show. Because if you have the power to take action in loving yourself, oh my gosh, you hold all the power. And that's what you're going to learn today. So, yeah, this is perfect, right? So, today I have Emerald Sinclair. Now, listen, she's been through it all, haven't we all? (laughs) And sometimes we do make the crazy mistakes, and so has she. Well, yeah, that's how we learn, right? But in the end, she learned one great important thing on this journey. She had to give herself the love she was looking for. And now she teaches, and I'm sorry, guys, but you can listen in. You might learn something, too. You know, we're not all that different. We have, she helps women to start to manifest the person in their lives, what they desire to have. Pretty cool, huh? Yes, it's going to be magical. Emerald, hello. Come on on and join us. Hello, hello, and thank you for having me. What a beautiful introduction. (laughs) Oh, well, thank you. Well, I'm so happy to have you on. So, okay, let's start back because I think people will relate to this. You know, we're not all that different. So this long road, I I bet I can totally sympathize, totally been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so let's describe this long road that many of us have been on and still some of us are still on to trying to find that, why do we keep getting into these relationships? We're like, oh my God, how do these people find me, right? (laughs) So how does that happen? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, and it's like you just so eloquently stated, we attract in whoever we are, and who we are is what we really believe to be true about our worthiness or what we see and experienced in relationship and partnership from a very early age, what we saw and experienced with our parents, with our family, with our friend groups. It forms this almost like this blueprint inside of your mind of what it is that is your norm and what it is that you can come to expect, which is why so many men and women experience Groundhog Day in their relationship. It might be a different person with a different face, but the experience and the feeling is the same because they haven't done the inner work to ultimately heal those stories and change that internal blueprint that was created from a young age and then reinforced as they grew up. And so I saw it manifest in my own life where I wanted love, I wanted healthy relationships, and yet I was attracting in the exact opposite. But I can look at it in hindsight and realize I had to learn all of those lessons. I had to learn how to love myself. I had to learn how to assert boundaries. I had to learn how to communicate all of these different skills. And so when I stopped looking externally, like some man needs to fix me or complete me or oh give my God. me love. Or, oh. <laughs> what a heavy load, you know, uh-huh. but you know what society has this thing. And I just heard it. Where would, where did I hear this? It was on the radio and, oh, it was a song. Oh my gosh. And in the song, he songs said, you, so toxic. <laughs> oh, they can be very toxic. Um, mm-hmm. uh, she's so messed up. I just love her. What? Oh, gross. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's so many songs and movies I just can't watch anymore without I know, me too. Me, throwing up a little bit in my mouth. I'm like, this is disgusting. This is the messages that people are hearing that they think is normal, but it's creating this toxic, unhealthy picture of love. Oh, it is. No man is supposed to. Does he need to feel needed? Why does he want a messy woman who's going to be crazy and anxiety filled and going off at the handle every two minutes? What is that? And why do they need that? Because they obviously because need that. It's that validation. Yeah, it's that external validation. If I can fix the crazy woman, that means I'm worthy. And women do the same thing with men. Once I get a guy to tell me how beautiful and lovely I am, oh, okay, then I can feel lovable. But that's 
completely backwards. You have to feel that first, and then you'll never need any man or woman to validate you. But the beautiful catch-22 is once you feel it for yourself, then you're going to get it in relationship, but not from a place of need, from a place of desire. And now we're talking healthy, conscious partnerships instead of Jerry Maguire, you complete me, needy, codependent. Oh, gosh. I know we all use that as an example. That was the worst line in the world. You know, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it is, you know, if it's really funny. I do find if you 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 really have to start with you because mm-hmm. even when I was in right relations and I've worked with all these people, if you do not start with you, then you're coming in, like you said, with the blueprint of what you grew up with. Okay. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden you are growing up with, oh my gosh, I didn't get along with my mom. Oh, my gosh, my dad was demanding and always trying to fix my mom. See, all right, that's my world. And I'm trying to put this out there to people to really see it. What were your parents like? And the parent that you had the most trouble with, I guarantee that's the relationship you're going to get. Because we have to fix the relationship. We have to fix that relationship. So we find all these freaking partners who are the just like my mother, just like my dad. And we go through the, that's the groundhog day. You can't fix it. You can't fix it because you're doing it from the view of your old you, the preconditioned you that was brought up with that problem. Do you see? And you haven't done the work to solve that in order to get the new relationship. That's what it comes down to, folks. And the, yep, you got to heal. You got to heal. And that's what we're talking about. And healing then becomes acceptance, and acceptance then becomes self-love, which is not ego love. It's this love deeper, and, and it's, almost, it's like a universal love, knowing that you are from a divine source of some sort, whatever your belief is, and that you are deserving of love because that's where you came from, that's where you're going, and that's what you want now. So... For you, Emerald, this is so cool. You understand all this vibration thing, and you understand mm-hmm. this. So, so all right, so here I come. <laughs> I'm the, oh, boy, watch out. Um, so here I come. I'm this woman who, oh, my gosh, I, I just can't, I just don't, I've tried, Emerald. I have tried to work on myself. I've corrected so much, but I still get the same kind of controlling man. What am I doing wrong? Mm, Okay, so there are certainly a variety of factors that could be at play here. So for one, for example, I work with a lot of high-performing, successful women. And part of it is if you're attracting, and let's just say, a controlling man, well, is it because you are too much in your feminine, not enough, not enough in your feminine energy? There could be that masculine. Oh, wait. Energy. I like this. I like. Like. Yeah, mm-hmm. so let's talk about that. Wait a minute. Sure. I, I'm, I'm playing this role here, so let's continue. So what do you mean? <laughs> yes, I am. Fe- What's wrong with being feminine? I'm a girl. What's wrong with that? Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being feminine. However, there's wounded feminine just like there's wounded masculine. And so if you're attracting yeah. in, I'm going to call him a wounded masculine. If he has to be controlling, if he has to dominate you, if yeah. he's not trusting of you, then that means you're too much in your wounded feminine. It means you're not trusting yourself. You're not allowing your own inner power to come through. Because in your feminine, we're not meant to just roll over and play dead like we can still be very soft but demanding or commanding of our own needs and make sure they're being met and so in this case i would question this woman's ability to really understand or this woman you yeah yeah we'll do me i'll be that woman yeah Yeah. (laughs) it's like to really understand your needs and speak from an empowered place of what it is that you're looking for because if you keep attracting in the same type of man then you're not learning the lesson so if he's being controlling in what ways are you allowing yourself to be controlled and not stand up for what it is that you truly believe in that's right i love that because sometimes we think being feminine is a passive a passive energy when really it's not And when we are feminine, 
and and I tend to be what I was the Pris. I tried to be a tomboy, guys, but I failed so miserably. <laughs> I really did. So I was always this very feminine girl. However, would I call myself someone who let people walk on me? Would I call myself somebody always kind, always I was always kind, but still feminine, but yet I knew who I was. And that's the thing. I knew who I was. And if I had I'm to very, heal, I'm sorry? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to say, I'm very feminine in my partner. You too? And a, absolutely. I love it's fun. the feminine role. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Yeah. But he's not controlling by any means. No. He gives me the space, he respects my opinion. It's a beautiful dance between healthy masculine and healthy feminine where both needs are being met, but there is no form of control or dominance or ego on either party's part. And that's because? Well, we've healed. We've healed the past, and we're, in, we're sure of who we are, and we're playing the roles that are inherent to our core. And for me, it's divine feminine, and for him, it's divine masculine. Yeah. Nice. So what, what was the second point now? Because we kind of, I like this. I mean, this is good, you know? We, we all think we have to be masculine, and it, it, no, we don't. And right now, there are so many different, oh gosh, my youngest was educating me on all the different flags of all the different types of relationships. There are so many flags. I mean, I didn't even realize there were that many flags. I, <laughs> I, don't think, I think it's because we have a lot of unhealthy human beings that haven't yet started digging into the work they're unconsciously replaying the patterns not only that they saw with their parents but once again think about the media the movies the music like it is so yeah, everything is crazy you look at the sitcoms from the 90s onward it's all about the hyper masculine smart controlling woman the doofus overweight do nothing man like what type of messages are we giving yeah men and before women that it was the john wayne you know and the, so yeah, i mean we exactly. they play with the relationships like crazy no really mm -hmm. i you know i looked at my son at that point i said honey you know what? If someone can find someone in this world that they truly love and they and it doesn't no, it's not the package. It's that soul. Then they are blessed because there are so many things in this world that are not love. And when you can find that, my God, you found the gift if you can mm -hmm. find it and really love it. So that's my answer to that with my three boys. But for you. But with this, it's so important to know who you are to start and that's that's yeah. what is your second one okay so the second one since as you know i teach about manifestation and law of attraction yes you always get who you are and so yes. i'm not saying that in this hypothetical case you're being hyper controlling and hyper masculine but what i am saying is you will attract certain people to you until you learn the lesson so what is it about yourself that believe that this is the type of guy that's out there or what is it about yourself that's continuously telling this story over and over again how men are controlling men are dominating i always seem to attract these types of men let me tell you why men suck and so i see women get into these patterns where they're focusing so much on what's not working that ultimately they have their blinders on that's all they can see and i think about i used to play golf there was this one hole in particular that i remember as a kid i I probably lost 30 golf balls because I kept hitting it in the water, but I was focusing on the water. And then I had this yes. aha moment. And I was like, Emerald, focus on the green. And then I had a beautiful chip. It went right on the green. It landed a couple of hole, a couple feet from the hole. And that right there was my reminder. You get what you're focusing yes. on every single time. And so whenever a woman's like, Emerald, I'm doing all the work and it's not working. I'm like, okay. How often throughout your day are you focusing on what's not working versus what is working? How often throughout your day are you telling the story of why it's not working? Where's my guy? I'm so lonely, blah, blah, blah. And then they have this realization that they're spending the majority of their time focusing on what's not working. And so yeah. the second case in point in the story could be you're putting all of your available energy towards what you don't want. Yes. And just like a radio station. That's what you yep. get. What dial are you tuned to? What are you dialed into? Yep, exactly, exactly. The controlling men station. <laughs> well, and sometimes, don't you find, you know, sometimes it's something little in your programming. And guys, I'll just tell you, you can do the work 
And then sometimes there's something in, I found that with one client, well, a couple of clients, that one, there's this, just this funny little belief in there that you'd think is nothing, but yet is design, it's just calling out for that type of person to come into your life. And it can be something you saw in a movie that you just thought was like that John Wayne thing, coming and saving the woman kind of thing. Or it, it can be that or the little fairy tales. It can be stuck in there. I want that guy on the white horse. That's all it could be. And you think that's so harmless. And yet it's exactly what you're getting and you don't want. Which is why every single relationship is a beautiful opportunity for learn. spiritual growth. It's a mirror. Yeah. You can see yourself reflected what you actually believe to be true. Exactly. Because I believe we always attract an energetic match in every single relationship, not just intimate partnerships. So if you can be the observer and instead um, of playing the victim of why does this always happen to me, well, step back and look at yourself from an outside perspective. Interesting. Yeah. What does this actually say about me? What could I learn here? What hidden belief systems must I believe to be true in order to be having this type of experience or relationship? And visualization. What do you think about I love visualization. Oh, I, I, I do it every single morning. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Because in order for you to create anything in your life, it's created first in the mind and then in reality. You have, so yeah. We, yeah, we got to paint the picture of where we're going. Otherwise, you'll continue to get what you've always gotten. What you are is what you get. So it starts inside you. It has what so is built above and below and inside. That is your reality. That's just the I way it is. Tell my client, you don't get what you want. You get who you are. Yeah. Yeah, you get who you are. It's really, it is, it's so interesting, and so many people don't understand it. And let's face it, when you say heal, oh my gosh, everybody goes, oh God, not again. You know, that, that <laughs> healing process that, you, but you know, folks, I've never found the healing process to be um, hard work. I never would use that definition on it because the healing brought, so much joy and so much release and so much lightness and I didn't just sit down and say I'm going to heal I think the, when the journey comes you open up to it and allow it to filter out of you and and there is a process well and I teach that because it doesn't have to be hard but yet people have this perception that healing has to be such hard work and yet it's one of the best things you can do for yourself now, when you when you talk about this healing and accepting oneself, what are, what are you trying? We all talk about that, but let's put it into definite terms. What what is that, Emerald? I mean, it is a journey. I'm not I'm not going to lie. It's a, it's a consistent process over time, and I've been on this journey for about 20 years, and so it, it's been. For example, the process of reading books and then applying the practices. And so it might be the good old Louise Hay looking in the mirror and telling yourself you love yourself. Mm -hmm. It might be saying your affirmations. It might be meditation. It might be hypnosis. It might be emotional freedom technique and tapping. But ultimately, I think the biggest part of it is really starting to question the thoughts that pop up into your mind and asking yourself, is this the story I want to believe? Because everything yes. is a story. Nothing is true or false, right or wrong. It's a story. Do you want to believe that story? Do you want to perpetuate it? And so if you're talking to yourself horribly, if you are your worst critic, that's not you loving yourself. And so it's slowing down. It's being present. It's observing the thoughts in your mind and questioning them and asking yourself, is is this the story you want to create? If you're the main character in your movie and you're also the director is this what you want to see manifest or is it something different? And, and that's the healing journey. That's where we have conscious control any moment to choose our thoughts, which in turn trigger our feelings, which in turn activate the law of attraction and manifestation to create either your dream life or Groundhog Day where just over and over and over again you're unfulfilled. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, mean, I couldn't have said it even better. I mean, that was perfect. <laughs> it really is. Guys, listen, the past truly is an illusion. I was telling my boys this. It is an illusion. And what you believe of that past creates your future. That's yeah. all it is. So just change your belief.
and the story. change and that changes the whole story it the past does not define you unless you allow it to simple well, and i always love to share that you don't have to change your past you just have to change your perception right of your past. well that's all you have that's, that's all you have folks yeah. <laughs> your perception mm-hmm. well where can people um find you in and where are you located on social media how can they find you emerald Yes, so I absolutely adore Instagram and my handle is at Manifest with Emerald. Otherwise, my podcast, Manifest It All, or my yes. website, Emerald Sinclair, are all beautiful places to find me. Um, or they can even buy my book and, and learn more about this process of sh- wiring or rewiring the brain and shifting your story by like falling that. in love. Mm, perfect. All right. Well, guys, to look her up and see, because it's really, it's so important. It's so important to start to love yourself. It changes the whole world you live in. And guys, don't forget about little old soul manifesto, because I'll tell you what, changes are around. New year, and we are just doing so much. Oh, and by the way, Hello Soul is out. It is out on Amazon. Hello Soul. That is my own journey with little helpful ways for you two to begin how I found myself going back and really starting to live by my true, authentic soul. Getting guidance every day, feeling that strength, that confidence, always knowing that you are, you've got this. Always knowing you've got this, no matter how bad it gets. So if you're interested in Hello Soul, go to Amazon and just type in Elena Chapman or Hello Soul and get your copy. And let me know. And I'll tell you what, if you let me know, somehow I can get that book and I'll autograph it for you. Very cool, huh? All right. I Really, folks, spirit is love. And we have so much stuff in us. If we can just start to accept ourselves, the world, and start to learn how to love, then there's no stopping spirit from being a part of every part of our life. Namaste, my dears. This has been Magical Moments with Elena, featuring Elena Chapman. If you missed an episode, download it now on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, CastBox, Deezer, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast platform. Learn more online at soulmanifesto.com.